Hello. Today we will begin a series of introductory videos to show you how to perform the basics in the new Album Gen version 3. In this video I will review the following. How to create a new album and set border styles. How to place objects on the page. How to access the built-in help files. Show you the new line in border styles like dashes, dotted lines, brackets, and custom image borders the importance of right-clicking on objects, how to copy and paste objects and move them plus the new drag and drop image option, how to align objects, how to import uh, uh, stamps from Easy Stamp, and the importance of doing regular cloud and traditional backups. Existing users migrating from Album Gen version 2 will be familiar with much of the functionality as we have tried to keep it as much as possible similar to version 2, but some things had to change to allow for the improved and added features available in version 3. Let's begin by creating a new album. When you start Album Gen, you will be presented with a blank canvas. I will close the file I have open now to show you this. I just go to File and close. And here's our blank canvas. To create a new album, we go to File, New Album, or just Control N. At a minimum, we have to give it a file name. And you can set passwords and descriptions. Um, I'm just going to change that here and then just click OK. You can also include a cover page but I'll let you read that. It's all explained in the manual. While you're on any screen in Album Gen, if you hit F1 in your keyboard you'll get a context sensitive uh, help screen that describes whatever page you're on and you can read up on it quickly or you can always go to the, the full PDF manual which is available from the help menu. There are many options uh, that you can set when you're creating a new page or album. So you can do things like change the margins and borders depending on uh, what, your, uh, what your needs are. So you can also change, add, add or change header footers, you can change a border style, you can add a custom image border, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the Graco, but there's a complete list of uh, different kinds, but I, I'm going to use the Graco for this particular one. And then you can also preview it, so you can sort of see what it's going to look like. I'm going to click OK to create our new blank album. An important note for new users and existing users, every icon in Album Gen, when you hover over it, it will give you a brief description of what the, uh, what that, what the action will be. You can also right click on any option and it will give you a, description of what's going, uh, a brief description of what it's going to do. And then at the bottom on the taskbar down here, when you hover over any icon, you'll also get a brief description. Let's first go over some terminology we will use throughout the videos. Here are some of the tools and areas in the Album Gen workspace. This is explained on page 12 of the PDF manual. So you can read up on it here, but I'll briefly go over these areas now. The first area is the title bar. This is up here. This will give you the name of the current file that you're working on and if there's an asterisk to the right of it, it is telling you that, that you have made changes and you need to save it. Then there is the application menu bar which is this area here. We also have the top toolbar which is this strip of icons here. We also have the side toolbar which is one of the, uh, uh, this one here which would be probably the most commonly used one. We also have the alignment palette, and then we have the information status bar as I've previously described down here. And then this whole area here is the workspace for albums. This is the printable part. This is the non-printable part, and we'll discuss that later. 
now that we have our album set up, let's add some content. Again, notice that when you hover over any icon down at the bottom on the taskbar here, you'll see that it gives you a brief description of what we're about to do. First, let's add a rectangle. So we select the, re uh, the rectangle shape from the side toolbar by left clicking on it. And then we move our mouse to the, uh, to the page and you'll see that it, the cursor changes to the shape that we're about to place. You left click on the page and then you'll get this screen with different options of what you want to do. Uh, so you can set the border style, uh, you can rotate it, you can choose the line style that you want. I'm going to use dotted, but you can use two point, four point, whatever you want. Let's leave it at dotted and then click OK. And there's our object that we just placed on the page. Let's place one more rectangle on the page. So again, I'm going to click rectangle. I'm going to click somewhere on the page. This time I'm going to use a slightly different border. So I'm going to use a two point border. And we can also change, uh, let's change it actually to a, uh, a polygon. So I'm going to use a pentagon. Uh, you can rotate them if you like. So let's say I want to change, rotate it 33 degrees and uh, click OK. And there's our new pentagon that we placed on the page. A new option in version 3 is the minimalist brackets option. Sometimes you just need it to be simple on the page. I'll show you that. So again, I'm going to choose a rectangle. I'm going to left click on the page. This time for border style, I'm going to choose brackets. And you can see that you can control each of the four corners, but I'm just going to leave all four for now. And I'm going to leave the rotation at zero and click OK. And here we are. So as I mentioned, you could have removed the uh, bottom left and upper right corners if you want. For now, I just chose to leave all four corners. Another great feature in version 3 is that there are now up to 1,000 levels of undo or redo. Let me demonstrate this. To, the undo and redo is available until you close an album. As long as you don't close it, you can undo and redo. So it's available from the menu up here and click undo. So if I just click undo, it got rid of the brackets. Now it got rid of the uh, pentagon. And now we're going to get rid of that shape. If I want them back, I just click redo. If you don't want to use the uh, the icons, you can just use your keyboard. So Control Z is an undo, and I'm going to redo it. Another very important uh, feature for new users is to learn that right-clicking on any album gen object will expose many properties and will allow you to quickly edit shapes or text. So if I right-click on this shape here, we go to Settings you can see that there's all sorts of things that you can do. So if I want to change the border or line style, I can go and change it from dotted to, let's say, one point. And it's now a solid line instead of the dash line. I'm going to do a control Z and put it back to dash. I'll now show you how to copy and paste images or uh, objects. So to copy and paste a single object, you simply left click on the object you want to copy, control C on your keyboard, and then control V, and then you'll see the cursor change, left click where you want it to be placed, you can repeat it again, and there you have it. To copy and paste multiple objects, we simply select the objects that we want by left clicking on them. And we do a control C and a control V to paste them. Notice that the copied items are pasted directly on top of the existing ones and have red selection handles to show you that they are sitting on top of pre-existing uh, objects. To uh, move them, you just left click and drag them where you want. As you may have noticed, moving objects is fairly simple. You just left click on it, on the object, and then just drag it and place it wherever you want. I'm going to clean up the space here a little bit 
by deleting some of these objects. So I select them, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and I'm just going to move them around a little bit so I can show you this next step. A great new feature in version 3 is to be able to place objects and images in the non-printable area of the workspace. Think of it as a placeholder or a scratch pad. I use this all the time when making changes to my pages. So I'm going to put one of those images back. So let's say I wanted to just keep that off the page for whatever reason I was designing things. I can just move it literally off the page. If you were to print this page, only this part would print. This would not. So let me put this back and I'm just going to leave this one here off the page. Aligning objects is also easily accomplished using the alignment options palette which is this, uh, this palette right here. Uh, what I'm first going to do is add a couple of images to these uh, shapes. So if I left click on one then right click on it, go to settings, image, I'm going to click change and then I'm just going to choose an image click OK and then I'll add another one here so we now have two shapes with images so let's align these two objects here so I left clicked on the first object I shift and click on the second object and now I'm going to align these two images so that this one is aligned to the top of this one and that's this icon right here so if you click on that you'll see that it'll align it to the top now I'm going to align these three objects so I select my reference object and then shift and click on these other two and now I'm going to align these to the left so that will be the left of this image here so you can see that they're all now aligned to the left edge and now I'll show you how to distribute these three items evenly so that they're spaced evenly apart I use this option quite a lot so we would choose this icon here and again if you notice in the taskbar it tells you what it's going to do so it's going to distribute them equally if you notice they're not spaced apart evenly but when you click on this icon it now centered all these three against each other. There are many other options for aligning. Uh, I'll leave that for you to discover in the manual, but um, it's, it's really quite useful. Again, I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with the many ways to align objects as it will really make page layout much faster. Now I'll show you the new uh, drag and drop feature so that you can drag images onto any object. I have a folder here with some images and uh, I'll choose one. So I'm just going to choose this particular image and literally just drag it onto a shape. And you can do that off the page. You can do it with, uh, let's not use a coin, let's use this guy here so it's it's that simple I, I find this sometimes much easier uh, especially if I've got custom images uh, that I want to use now I will do an import from easy stamp which I have running I'll do the uh, US 2023 issues and export the year denomination and catalog number the process is pretty much the same as in version, in version 2 but with some enhancements and more flexibility first thing we need to do in the easy stamp preferences so we go to options preferences you want to make sure that this checkbox is selected so that you are doing the export for uh, version 3 and not the old version 2 Now we'll do the export um, by holding down the uh, control key and clicking on the export icon. I'm going to do the uh, 2023s and click find and export. Now it's ready to be used in album gen. 
to start to start the export what we do is we go to the extras menu and click easy stamp import or just hit F2 oh, we have to actually save the file first and now you'll be presented with a screen um, which may look uh, intimidating at first but it, it's actually not that bad if you um, once you set things it will remember it and then you can just reuse it as you need to so I'm gonna uh, uh, get it to fill the page as much as it can it's going to place the images and then I can choose where I want uh, my items to come through so for example the catalog number is going to be below the frame the denomination uh, is going to be inside the uh, inside the frame and if I want the year I can put it above the frame and then now I just click import and there they are so we have to go to the new page and it's really quite that simple. Again, you can move them any way you want. If you want to rearrange it, you can just take some things off the page and you know arrange them the way that you want. Oops. I'm going to undo that. One thing you may have not noticed when I did the import, there is an option. So I'll start the import again. There is an option to save your settings and then you can load them again. So if you have different settings for different albums, you can save them. All right. Finally, I'll discuss the importance of doing album gen backups. To do a backup, you first have to um, close the file. So I'm going to go to close. With version 3 of AlbumGen, we have introduced the cloud backup uh, option service, which you can subscribe to. So if you've subscribed for it, you go to Extras, Cloud Backup, you would register, it, register for it, um, and then you do a backup. And I'll just kind of start the process. And I've done an ex another video for this. We highly recommend that you watch the video. Um... I highly recommend this uh, option, the cloud backup, to protect your albums and your work and settings. Um, again, we have a separate video for that that's already on our website. Uh, we will be working hard to create part two of just the basics video series, which will be coming soon. Enjoy.